So we're going to be going over the 50 brain cell challenge. And if you've come from TikTok, you've obviously seen me go around and trash talk the grocery store because it's all trash. So here's the 50 brain cell challenge in its full circle, how you can incorporate it. So the very first thing is a little bit of education. So remember, we've mentioned neurogenesis, neuroplasticity, autophagy, ketones, brain derived neurotropic factor, hippocampus, visceral fat. This is like the beginning, glucose, glycogen, microbiome, hypoglycemia. So if you are fasting, you do get the low blood sugar, mitochondrial, subterraneous fat, insulin resistance. And we're going to be updating this in the future. So number one main thing on here is like gut health, brain growth, mental health, freedom. Like mind your gut and you will keep your mind. Really important to realize whether or not you're eating 7,000 calories for breakfast, 7,000 chemicals for lunch, and 9,000 chemicals for dinner. But we're here to talk about you have 50 brain cells in a day, and every one ingredient you eat is going to be minus one brain cell. But what is the 50 brain cell challenge? It's basically this crazy information here on a wall compartmentalized into simple forms where, oh no. The amount of ingredients that I'm consuming in a day are causing an immune response or allowing me to not produce serotonin in my gut microbiome and I'm basically just ruining my health. And then you can see this little chart right here, 48.7% of Americans were healthy. Were healthy, and this is only comparing ADHD, cancer, obesity, dementia, diabetes, autoimmune diseases, anxiety, and depression. Leaves 41% of the American population considered healthy. And that's only off of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different things, right? Three, three, eight different things. I can't do math. But we began this research on gut-related issues, and we stopped after eight common issues and it teetered over 50% of the society suffering from some things that we can solve. So how does the 50 brain cell challenge work? Very simple. You have 50 brain cells in a day, and every one ingredient you consume is minus one brain cell. So for instance, if you're waking up in the morning and you're consuming black coffee, that is minus one. If you're waking up in the morning and you're consuming green tea, that is minus one. So your brain cell counts. This is just a typical compare and contrast right here. So if you have 50 brain cells at the beginning of your day, each ingredient in your food is eight ingredients, meaning you'll have 42 left. And then this is a little bit of a breakdown. So if you have salmon, lemon, salt, garlic, turmeric, pepper, coconut oil, and asparagus, that leaves you with a remaining of 42. And the whole goal here is being more conscious about the foods that you're consuming and what is in the foods that you're consuming. Because anybody can have salmon, but are you getting a salmon from the store that's pre-seasoned with a bunch of random ingredients that you may or may not understand what they actually do to you? This is where you learn to eat single ingredient foods. So, and then sorry, a little bit for the last math. And the way that this works is when you look at your ingredients, we count every item. So I don't even care if it's in parentheses and brackets because at the end of the day, it's too many. So the way that you read your ingredients is that the very first ingredient, as you can see, enriched cornmeal or fortified cornmeal. Please look into the reason that enriched cornmeals or enriched or fortified anything is extremely bad for you. Look at all the cereals. They're all enriched or fortified and that's just an absolute fail. So there's going to be certain ingredients that are absolute fails. So like enriched anything is a fail. Vegetable oils are fails. The maltodextrins are fails. The monosodium glutamates are fails. The food colorings are fails. You really don't want sunflower oil. You want to be paying attention to oils that are high in omega-3 fatty acids. So right here, you can see that these ingredients are a total of eight because there's not much more ingredients wise than a lemon. Unless you're getting the lazy version of a lemon, which is some sort of lemon juice, they're going to have citric acid, Maybe they're gonna have a preservative in there. So this is where count your ingredients. Mind your gut and you will keep your mind. It's very clear and I, yeah. I wish there was a way to say, yeah, you can eat all the ice cream and chips that you want and you're gonna be happy and healthy, but that's not true. So this is how you would break down the ingredients. The rate here is a minus 34. So basically by consuming this chip, you'd be minus 34. So you'd have 16 remaining in the day and pretty much off of 16, you're probably not gonna be able to eat too many healthy foods. Rule of thumb here is if it has more than five ingredients in it, like a single food with more than five ingredients, like a cheese with more than five ingredients, not cheese. Please don't eat it. So avoid. We're going to update this list as well, but monosodium glutamates, titanium dioxide, high fructose corn syrup, lectins, DATEM, modified anything, dextrose, multidextrins, uh, oils, soybean oils, their vegetable oils are literally in everything, aspartanes, azulfame potassium, sodium nitrates, any starches. 
what they're doing with like instead of putting cornstarch, they're putting like tapioca starch. So there is a it's a Cleveland Clinic uh, insulin factor. It's like I forget what it is. It's blood sugar and insulin. I went over it in another video, and it'll explain to you exactly the foods that are spiking your blood sugar. And most of them are crappy unhealthy foods. The sulfates, food starches, concentrates, coloring, the word sodium, anything with more than three ingredients in it, right? Like th more than three, bad. More than five, even worse. So next page, lectins, right? If you're worried about lectins, that would be from the book, The Plant Paradox by Stephen Gunthry. He talks about it a lot. I've met some people that swear by the diet. I've met some people that think it's crazy science, but, and then for anybody that's not familiar with a lectin, uh, imagine that you're celiac and you have a response from consuming those types of foods that initiate your response. Lectins are a similar same way. So celiac disease, problems with lectins, do your own research. Now processed packaged foods, high fructose corn syrup, trans fats, hydrogenated fats, canned vegetables, juices, glutens, grains, like rice and quinoa, like you're supposed to ferment quinoa. Did you know that? When you cook rice, you're supposed to put your rice in the refrigerator before you consume it. Those are two ways to just improve the quality of the food that you're consuming. So sugars, sweeteners, dairy products, unfortunately, casein A1 proteins versus casein A2 proteins. There's literally even a milk company called Steep One. So if you, like this is, this is where like one of those moments where I'm telling you something and it might take like five, 10 years for like some sort of lawsuit to come out, like kind of what happens with, you know, taste the rainbow. But you know, it's do your own research. I, I've, I've done mine and these are the things that I've learned that repeated themselves so many times that it's like beaten into my brain. So soy products, there's a lot of research behind it. Is soy good, is soy bad? And you'll even read research where it's like, oh, like if somebody's experiencing this type of cancer that they, they, they shouldn't avoid soy really weird with gene mutations and most people don't know their genes or if they are mutated with a C, A, T, or G. So a majority of the information that people are utilizing is not based on them. So for instance, I had rotator cuff surgery. My genetics are predisposed to having rotator cuff injury. So therefore my workouts should be different than someone else's. So when somebody looks at a workout from someone, do your genetics reflect that that is what you should be doing? And if you don't know the answer to that, consider getting a genetic test. That's why we do those. So processed meats, deli meats, peanuts, peanut butters, canola oils, cotton seeds, potatoes, sweet potatoes, and yams. If you're worried about these, then do your own research or talk to our dietitian because she's done this for you. So now this goes in one level, level deeper right here. This goes into like chip brands, dressing brands, cookie brands, breakfast items. There you go with the enriched flour right there, unbleached enriched flour. You got your modified corn starches, you got sugar, maltodextrins, disodium, granulates. Like why are we putting all of these random foods in here? Uh, palm oil, canola oil, corn syrup, soy lectin, artificial flavors, the enriched flour, soybean, DATEM. DATEM is an interesting one. It was even, I think, Correct me if I'm wrong here, I follow up too. But the DATEMs were even talking about causing heart problems. Pizza, cheesecake, for instance. Cheesecake is 51 ingredients. That is absolutely insane. And it has like palm oil multiple times. It has corn starch and it's just, there's a reason that they mix together. Uh, sugar and oil is because it tastes really good. It's like, mm, mm, it's sugar and oil. It's like ice cream. It's why when you would look at a bag of M&Ms that the bag of M&Ms wouldn't have high fructose corn syrup in it or any of these weird ingredients because just the mix of sugar and oil together tastes good enough. And then you can see one, 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 one because single ingredient foods are better. Now, transitioning here, uh, gut health is one of the most important topics to understand about health and fitness. Like people say abs are made in the kitchen. Yeah, abs are made in the kitchen where you usually eat healthy food because you're not at McDonald's. So very, very simple. But general homeostasis and the fat loss, your visceral fat loss is the most important part. So mind the gut and you keep your mind. The bigger the belly, the smaller the brain. That's hippocampus research, insulin growth factor one, glucose. All of it is connected across the board to the point where there's even meta-analysis studies around brain-derived neurotropic factor where people that have lower levels of brain-derived neurotropic factor, roughly 66% of serum levels are more likely to develop some sort of neurodegenerative diseases. So if you don't want to experience neurodegeneration, then you should get your gut health checked. You should get your gut health in line. And you should probably talk to your doctor, talk to your PCP, talk to somebody much smarter than me, but I got doctors and other people that can help you at the company. So brain growth and learning. There's a staggering number of books and research about bold claims that the belly is the real brain, which brings me back to the phrase, mind your gut, keep your mind. 
So the more you learn into this, the more you're going to realize that that is why you actually don't feel good. When you're putting all of these incorrect ingredients into your food, your brain is not able to process the way that your brain needs to be processing. It is just not the right thing to do absolutely at all. So remember, do your own research. That is why I have given you PDFs with links to research papers and books that you are more than welcome to go read and make your own deductions. Don't trust me because this is what I do all day. Trust and verify. Verify, then trust. But, I don't know, I dotted my I's and crossed my P's for years before I decided to speak. But legend holds that great minds will only teach those who are fasted because he believed they could not learn otherwise. Which means, like, if you're genuinely trying to learn something from this person, he would not teach you if you had eaten that day because he believed that you could not learn. And then, funny enough, we fast forward to today. And we realize, hmm, beta amyloid plaque, neurogenesis, neuroplasticity, brain-derived neurotropic factor, higher mitochondrial functioning, and all of it seems to line up with some weird thought that someone had back in the day. So, moving on, decision, right? Waking up for the day. This is why I wrote that giant list of information for you in a day-by-day -day exactly how you can decide to live. Eat nothing, burn fat, neurogenesis, lower information, plasticity, gut diversity, gut bacteria, ketones, cleaner energy, more mitochondrial functioning, increase your DNA repair, clean your body out of the bad proteins, which is your autophagy. Breakfast, minus the total ingredients that you're consuming with breakfast. Now, 50 brain cells each day, very, very simple. So like eggs, oatmeal, salt, pepper, mushrooms, asparagus, cheese, plus four, that leaves you at 10, you're gonna have about 40 left over. Number two, salmon, garlic, salt, pepper, turmeric, coconut, broccoli, or whatever other kind of green you like, minus seven, you're at 33. So you're still gonna be able to eat pretty wholesome meals whenever you're going through this, but the rule of thumb is just to end up with the most brain cells at the end of the day. And that's where it's like fasting's encouraged because you're gonna end up with more brain cells than people that decided to eat. So you're counting your ingredients on your food, you're minusing your ingredients off of the food, then you're starting with 50. And then as you can see, blueberries, dried berries, quinoa, olive oil, garlic, walnuts, almonds, that's a minus seven, putting you at 26. And then four, uh, blueberries, flaxseed, peanut butter, almond milk, which is the shake, minus four, put you at 22. And meal number eight, I don't know what you wanna have for meal number eight. So grocery shopping. This is why we created the 24 page paper of healthy foods. This was written by a gut restoration dietitian. It took her about three and a half months to write just because there's a lot of research that goes into foods that people should be consuming and then the overall nutrient content in the foods to make sure that you're choosing the right possible food to get the right possible nutrients that you need. So single ingredient foods, three to eight ingredients max, high omega-3 fatty acids, less than three ingredients, avoid name brands because name brand foods have cut corners. That's why they're all over the grocery store. They have capital gains so they can easily take up all the space in the grocery store. So shopping unhealthy, more than three ingredients, filled with oils, containing ingredients on the banned list, uh, grain-based with tons of shelf life, which is like cereals. Those things can probably be eaten five months from now. And then we made a shopping list. That's why we made the 24-page paper of healthy foods for people. So now, do you want to exercise today? This is just going to go over. I'm not going to bore you with this. This is one of our more simple PDFs. And this is a PDF that I need to rewrite. As you can see, I made this the first time. It's the first PDF that I ever created. So you can see the difference between these PDFs and the other PDFs. You get better at things as time goes on. But burn fat, same thing. Lower IGF-1, stay, stay younger. Joint health, every one pound of body weight is four pounds of joint pressure. So if you notice, people that are morbidly obese end up needing like knee replacements or their hip issues. It's because of the joint pressure that they have. Then no exercise, higher rates of type 2 diabetes, lower memory and learning, weaker immune health, age faster, die sooner, somatic discomfort, pain in your body. Move around, do some yoga, and then you have higher chances of depression and anxiety by not exercising. And then we already went over all of this in the day-by-day -day plan. So for instance, you know, waking up, walking, hiking, biking, meditating, breathing, lifting, swimming, yoga, qigong, anything that gets the blood pumping. Heart rate, that's what we're going to pay attention to, right? Remember that little heart rate scale that we learned in high school where it's like, yeah, your optimal heart rate's here. It's real. And then with boot camps, you see boot camps on the bottom of that? Um, be very clear with yourself that just because somebody's doing an exercise does not mean that exercise is correct for you. Like a five foot person is going to work out differently than a six foot five person. It's just facts. Now, mindset, understanding what you're doing is going to be hard. I literally gagged up kale in a sink for a week because I was so used to eating chemically filled foods that these other foods didn't taste like. I was like, ew, salad's disgusting. It took me nine months to stop eating bad things. You can do this if you want to do this. The reasons that you would do this, family, friends, significant other, maybe the future of the human race, uh, becoming intelligent because that allows you to help other people in a better way. And then helping, other, helping others changes the world faster. And then if not you, then who? If not now, then when? You can do anything you put your mind to. Just wanted to make sure nothing was holding your brain back. 
because things will hold your brain back, right? Mind your gut, keep your mind. Now, this is, what is the obesity rate in America? 42.4%, which has actually gone up. So these are obesity rate statistics, and I think it was roughly 2020, whenever I did this. But this is where you see the bigger the belly, the smaller the brain. So the insulin response with the insulin resistance causing the visceral belly fat, dropping below the homeostatic line. And then there's a video there for you to go check out. And then now homeostatic line over time. This is our homeostatic line with the homeostatic charts. That's the next thing I need to be putting in here are these charts. That was another viral video I had on TikTok. So going over those charts is gonna take me probably two and a half hours just because there's so many of them. But this is where you really realize that your body prefers homeostasis. And when we consume foods and ingredients or live lifestyles that are in the opposite of homeostasis, we begin to suffer. So over the next five years, you can see the little function chart right there. As you can see, this PDF looks like it was made by a third grader, but I totally had no concept of how to make things look good. So I just kind of put the information together. But the big point here is to realize over the next five years, you're going to either improve the quality of your life or decrease the quality of your life by the decisions that you make. You may or may not be aware of these decisions, but you are going to be making them on a daily basis. And I'm telling you right now that you're going to be making these decisions on a really daily basis. So choose the right decision. You're going to make a choice. There was a person that made a video that said, there's no such thing as the right choice. Yeah, not eating pizza and drinking beer is the right choice. So belly research, just in case anybody wants to look at obesity and brain function, the body brain crosstalk, visceral belly fat with lower brain volume in middle-aged healthy adults, obesity and neuronal inflammation, so neuroinflammation, neuroinflammatory, it is unreal. Pathway of cognitive impairment, type 2 diabetes and cognitive impairment with, with dementia. If you look at autistic boys, they usually have the bigger belly, like it's, it's real. So like gut microbiome issues, fecal matter transplants, I'm not gonna sit here and bore you with off topic information, but I suggest you learn about these things because it's very fascinating to understand. So cognitive decline, dementia, diabetes, mechanics, clinical implications of these issues that are happening in our society. Like for instance, I remember I woke up every single day and I would blow up a company called UPMC about how they would not be sharing the information on reversing type two diabetes naturally and they're pushing bariatric surgeries, gastric bandings. And it took nine months and then they actually updated their website. And I was like, good job. You're not actually killing people anymore. Have a great day. So brain structural differences between normal and obese adults and links with the lack of uh, perseverance, negative to urgency, sensational seeking, like people are seeking a sensation, eating foods, MRI machines, brain scans, yummy, yummy. That's why people eat it. There's no other reason. So remember, you can do anything. This was written by another human. And actually that was me at Garden of the Gods. I sat there and meditated for an hour. You can see that little person hiding back there, but they blend into the rocks perfectly. And then boom, that was me at 28. That was me at 30. That's literally a two year difference. I was depressed and eating a bunch of crap. Spent two years reverse engineering this research paper and bam, healthy AF. So I'll see you in the next PDF down below. As always, if you have any questions, uh, reach out, have a conversation. I have answers because I created these resources. So I will see you in the next video, which is going to be right down here.